Thank you, everybody. Please be seated. Cross-examination, Attorney Vera. Thank you. Kat, is it okay if I call you Kat? Yes. Okay. I just have a couple questions for you, so I won't keep you here super long. Um, we saw a lot of screenshots and pictures that you provided law enforcement. Um, it's not unusual for you to take screenshots and have a lot of pictures of your activities, correct? No. And we're just focusing on a particular time frame, but as far as photographs and screenshots, that's about what you do any other month, any other week, correct? Correct. Um, I want to take you back to the Halderson household for a little bit. You've probably been there about at least a dozen times. Is that fair? Yes. Probably more. Mm -hmm. So you're familiar with the layout of the home? Yes. And you're probably familiar with how the Haldersons kept the home? Yes. Um, so you're familiar with the fact that they didn't have an AC unit, correct? Correct. Um, and this summer was particularly hot, correct? Correct. Um, so when you were around during the summer, it wasn't unusual for them to have their windows open? Not unusual at all. Um, they were also doing renovations around that time, correct? Correct. Um, we've seen a couple pictures of the home, and there were what I'll refer to as blankets that were covering some of the furniture. That's not unusual, correct? Not at all. And do you know why the blankets were there? Um, Ms. Halderson likes protecting the couches from the dogs because they would jump on there, especially once coming outside. Um, so that was probably something that was kept year-round throughout the house. The blankets on the couches? Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Um, now, as far as the time you spent with the Haldersons, it sounded like you, you spent a lot of time with them there as a, a family, if you will. Correct? Correct. Um, so you've probably had a couple meals with them? Correct. And... Would you agree with me that the Haldersons, Chandler, Brett, and Krista enjoyed cold beverages? Correct. And they, um, you mentioned during your direct that in one of the freezers there was a bag of ice. Correct. It's not unusual for them to have bags of ice in their household. No, it's not unusual. And is that because there was um, a broken ice maker, or did they even have an ice maker? Um... The ice maker in the fridge in the kitchen uh, was always broken, and they had um, a tiny ice maker, a little portable one, but it, uh, it was slow at making ice. So sometimes um, Chandler would go get some ice from Quick Trip. I think that was the nearest place. Correct. And sometimes Krista would do that too. Correct. Maybe even Bart. Correct. You mentioned the dogs, and we've kind of heard about the dogs for a bit. Um, so the Haldersons had two dogs, correct? Yes, Rizzo and Izzy. Um, and a couple of times we've heard that maybe perhaps they were kept in the garage when people were coming over. In your experience, would you describe the dogs, and maybe one in particular, as anxious? Yes. Maybe jumpy? Yes bit afraid yes and that was was it both of the dogs or just one dog uh Rizzo Rizzo and she's the oldest one or the youngest one the youngest um and that was just her personality correct correct did she was she nice with you did she approach you it took her a long time but yes but eventually she warmed up to you yes and in particular around this time because it's 4th of July, there were a lot of fireworks going off, correct? Correct. And that just made her anxious, skittish worse. Correct. And as far as the dogs go, Chandler loved these dogs, correct? Correct. He took good care of these dogs. Correct. You mentioned that I, I think it was Izzy that fell down the stairs and he, he stayed with her to make sure she was okay. Or was that the other dog, Rizzo? Uh, it was Izzy who fell. And as far as Chandler goes, you would agree with me that he's generally a quiet individual. Correct. Reserved. Correct. You probably bring out more of his personality. Correct. 
Um, we also saw a lot of pictures that you two took together. Was that something that you did often? Correct. And you would also agree with me that he's a pretty nerdy guy. Correct. He loves Star Wars. Correct. Did you already have Chewbacca before you met Chandler, or did he help you out with that? I got Chewbacca about three weeks after dating Chandler, but I named him. So you guys had a bond with that with Star Wars? Yes, uh, I had an action figure collection that he liked. I have no further questions for you. Thank you. Any redirect? Um, can I approach briefly? Promise. Sure. It'll take long. All right, back to you, Council. You mentioned the um, Haldersons had a small ice machine in their home? Yes. Um, how much, when you say small, what do you mean by that? Like, what, how quickly would it produce ice? Um, maybe, like, what, three of these? wide and maybe three stacks it was it was um not that big and um it created little ice cubes that you would just scoop and put in your drink and you would have to constantly add water to keep it going sure. um, the july 1st or, or july 2nd um around that time you said the halderson sometimes would buy ice though if they needed more yes what do you Around that time, do you know of any reason why Chandler would have needed 20 or more pounds of ice, uh, more than what was able to be produced at the house in that ice maker? Can you repeat that? Right. Do you know of any reason that Chandler, uh, for his own purposes, would have needed 20 or more pounds of ice around July 1st this year?
Not that I can think of, no. And around that time, you had brought a bag of ice to the house too, right? Yes. Okay. So there was the ice maker, there was the bag you brought, bought, and then if I ask you, if Chandler had bought two more bags, there's a lot of ice in the house around that time. Yes. No further questions. And I'll just note for the record that I think it's fair to say the dimensions was approximately a foot by a foot cube is what I'm gathering from my angle of, of view. Any problem with that? No. Anything, uh, any dispute with that from the defense? No. May this witness be excused? She is excused. Is she released from her subpoena? She is not. All right. That means, uh, Miss, that you are finished testifying here today, but you're still under the state's subpoena and the defense, if the defense has one, and that you can't discuss your testimony with anyone, and you'll have to wait to find out from the party subpoenaing you when you're released or whether you're being recalled. All right? Thank you so much for your time. You can go ahead and exit, and we'll take one more witness. State calls Detective Timothy Blank. Is there the exhibit? Good afternoon, sir. If you are willing and believe you can do so safely and responsibly, testifying without a mask would be our preference. Thank you. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, you're our last witness for the day, but uh, can you state and spell your name? Timothy, T-I-M-O-T-H-Y, blank, B-L-A-N-K-E. And Mr. Blank, what do you do for a living? I'm a detective for the Dane County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been in that role? I've been a detective since 2014. And how long have you been in law enforcement? Since 2004. Uh, were you asked to assist in the missing persons investigation to Bart and Krista Halderson that turned into a homicide investigation at some point? Yes, sir. Uh, if you had to summarize uh, generally what your role has been in this investigation, uh, what has it been? I've had various aspects of the investigation, including assisting with digital forensics acquisitions, interviewing witnesses, um, and helping compile information. I think the jury just heard from a, a young woman by the name of Kat. Uh, were you involved in her interviews uh, somewhat? Yes. Okay. You were one of the detectives who conducted them? Yes. Okay. Uh, at all times, was Kat cooperative with you? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you what's been marked in this case is exhibit number 120. Uh, just briefly, what is that? That is my curriculum vita. In your role as a detective with the Dane County Sheriff's Department, are you frequently called upon to uh, conduct investigations into electronics and, and computer technology and things of that sort? Yes. Um, and what type of training do you have in that area? I'm certified in multiple uh, disciplines and electronic, um, I'm sorry, digital forensic tools, including the Celebrate UFED for PC software, Celebrate Physical Analyzer, um, and Burla for digital forensics of automobiles. We may hear from you multiple times during this trial, uh, but it's the first time I think the word Cellbrite has been mentioned. What is Cellbrite? Cellbrite is a company that provides a number of software solutions to law enforcement, the defense industry, the in um, government intelligence agencies, as well as the private sector uh, for acquiring and analyzing digital data. And um, for a large part, does Dane County Sheriff's Department as well as other police agencies employ some of Cellbrite services? Yes. And, and uh, specifically one of their services involving the downloads of phones, email accounts, things of that sort? Yes. Um, just give us a basic overview. If I gave you my phone and I gave you my password, um, what would Cellbrite do to it? The Cellbrite UFED 4PC program would be used to acquire data from the phone. It essentially makes a copy of the phone in a forensically sound manner to prevent any alteration of the data. Okay. Um, if a layperson were to use the phrase, 
the police downloaded my phone or they mirrored my phone, is what they're referring to as a cell break download? Yes. Okay. I just picked up a random exhibit, it doesn't really matter, it's exhibit 540. Um, what does that appear to be? That appears to be a text conversation obtained from a cell break. Okay. Um, does Cellbrite have different ways you can view the messages or view the communications within the software? Yes. Um, one of those ways is this very pleasant way to see it, correct? Yes. And what's the way, what's this referred to in, in your industry? Conversation view. And what's the other way? Uh, there's a timeline option, there's a few others. Sure. So if I display 540, which is already in evidence, um, messages that we've already looked at, um, this is the conversation view um, that's the product of Cellbrite from the raw data it downloads from phones. Yes. Okay. Can Cellbrite be utilized in other aspects or is it just phones? I know it can be used, uh, utilized for a number of options. Uh, what other types of services, communication methods, things of that sort can Cellbrite be used for? Uh, Cellbrite can be used for um, acquiring data from thumb drives, um, other electronic storage methods. Uh, we can actually obtain data from drones. Um, we can also use it to analyze data uh, provided to us by a number of um, electronic services, I'm sorry, internet service providers such as Google, Facebook, Apple. In the course of this case, were you asked to do uh, just that in, in a variety of different fashions for different devices and services using Cellbrite software? Yes. Okay. Have you found that software to be um, a good tool and an accurate tool to download the contents of either those providers, uh, email accounts, or Google or phones, have you found it to be accurate and, a, and a, a solid tool for law enforcement to use? Yes. And do you have any problems with it yourself? No. You say you had numerous involvements in this case, different things. At some point, were you asked to meet with uh, the defendant's brother, a young man by the name of Mitchell Halderson, uh, regarding a DNA sample? Yes. Okay. Um, and did you obtain a DNA sample from him? Yes, I did. In a homicide investigation, is DNA, are DNA samples taken from a variety of people? Yes. Um, for what purposes? That can be for a number of purposes. It can be to identify a suspect, but it can also be to eliminate someone from involvement in a crime. Um, it can also be used to identify um, other people's involvement in other aspects of the crime. Sure. Um, and did you talk to Mitchell about getting a DNA sample? Yes. And did he provide one to you? Yes, he did. I'm sure, it's been marked in this case as exhibit number 361. Um, what does that appear to be? That would be the buckle swabs that I took from Mitchell Halderson. Okay. Uh, because of the cadence and where you're testifying in this case, it's probably the first time anyone's used, heard the phrase buckle swab. What is a buckle swab? That's a swab taken from the mouth of a suspect, of a person we're obtaining it from. And you took it yourself? Yes, I did. How do you take a buckle swab from someone? Now, the first step is to um, place a mask over my own mouth to prevent any of my own DNA from contaminating the sample and also to wear latex gloves, which are provided in that kit. We then have the person we're obtaining the sample from um, take a drink of water and swish it around in their mouth to remove any residual um, DNA that might be in their mouth from another person. Um, then two swabs are taken um, for approximately 30 seconds each on um, each side of the inside of the person's cheeks. Um, using a cotton swab attached to a wooden stick, essentially a long Q-tip. Okay. After you take a buckle swab from a suspect, and we can use um, Mitchell Alderson as the example, uh, what do you do with it at that point? I retain custody and control of it. I then allow it to dry for a minimum of 24 hours before uh, packaging it. And uh, is it sealed at that point? Yes. And where are those generally kept? In the Dane County Sheriff's Office evidence room. And are those frequently transported to a certain location for testing at some point? Yes. And what's that location? The Wisconsin State Crime Lab. Uh, anything about uh, Mitchell Halderson's buckle swab or DNA sample different than the normal process for you? Not at all. Okay. Um, if I haven't already done so, I'll move 361 into evidence and we'll just leave that there for now. Any objection? No objection. It's received. In one of your, you mentioned that you interviewed um, Kat, and one of those interviews, did you become aware that this was a screenshot, Exhibit 532, that she had taken of a location of Chandler Halderson? Yes. And did she provide this to you? I believe so, yes. At some point, were you and other sheriff's deputies, just using the streets on here, able to match that up to a real location in the real world? We were able to figure out where this was. Yes. And where was it? It's in the town of Roxbury, 
um, just across the Wisconsin River from the Sauk City Prairie of Sac area. Okay. Um, have you been out to that property? No, I haven't. Okay. And you're aware that sheriff's deputies later searched that property? Yes. And I'm going to show what's been marked briefly as 55. It's been received into evidence. Uh, does that appear to be the area that was snapshot or screenshotted by Cat and provided to you during that interview? I don't recognize that area. I haven't seen it myself. Sure. I'll give you one second here. Just to match it up, if you look at 532, this was the screenshot she provided to you. Mm -hmm. And is there a little island in the middle of the river right there? Yes. All right. And there's it's a rural area with a town across the way. Yes. Okay. No further questions for now. Cross-examination at this time? No, thank you. May this witness be excused, but not released. Yes. Thank you so much, Detective. Ladies and gentlemen, it is almost quarter to five, and I think that's a good point for us to end today. I appreciate very much um, all your patience during the day today, and uh, I uh, ask you to do the same thing overnight tonight as far as staying well, getting rest, uh, taking care of yourselves, and ensuring that you're not exposed to any information about the case, uh, observing any media about the case in any nature, digital, print, televised, and don't engage in any discussions with anyone about these matters amongst yourselves or anyone in your households or circles, and avoid anyone who is discussing the case during the time that we're apart. We'll do the same thing tomorrow, um, beginning um, at 8.45, and we'll gather at 8.30 and make sure we're ready to go. There are a few things that I know I have to address that have come up today that I just uh, decided to, to hold off on and not delay things for us. Um, there is a very much a likelihood that we will break tomorrow early, and I don't know if anybody depends on someone else for a ride. If you do, let me let me know through Randy and I can get you some, some more definite information. Um, but I think that uh, I have a few things in my other cases that I needed to get onto a calendar, and we were kind of thinking that if we didn't go the full day on Friday, you would not be upset. Uh, and I hope that's true. Uh, but I don't know exactly when we're scheduled to break. 2.30? 3.30. Well, I guess that isn't as early as I was thinking. <laughs> but we'll also see how it goes with the presentation. It may be, we may be a little earlier than that. It's, uh, again, if you need a ride, let us know so that we can help to coordinate that for you. But otherwise, have a good evening, folks. Thank you so much. All right.